What a great pleasure it is for me to welcome all of you here to Los Isleños Museum Complex. We have here nine buildings, again, 22 acres, a nature trail. Los Isleños Museum Complex is dedicated to interpreting the history and the culture of the Canary Islanders from Spain who came to Louisiana between 1778 and 1783 and founded our parish in 1779. When Canary Islanders come to Louisiana, they look at us and they say, well, some of you speak the idioma Canaria, the Canarian dialect, but the food you eat is different. The way you live is different. So long ago, we came to the conclusion that in order to accurately present who we are as an evolved people culturally, we had then to look at the other ethnic groups which uh, had such a great impact on our identity. And of course, who could we ignore least than the Filipinos? The Filipinos came to Louisiana just at the same time as did the Canary Islanders. And over two centuries, our communities have intermarried. I know today I have my cousin Lorne uh, Peralta here, and uh, he is a direct descendant of the Filipino people. I am not, but he is, and we're cousins. We also have uh, Doris Serene, whose husband Whippy is one of our past presidents. Doris is a Filipina. She is descendant of the Philippine people. So I could go on and on all of the connections that we have here, but it's just great that we are able now to further flesh out who we are as a people. And it's so important as Americans for us to remember a pluribus unum, for many have come one, but we must never forget the different components in the many. And we really need to celebrate the, the Philippine people. And we thank you so much for the investment of this beautiful marker. It will enhance our grounds. And then also I should mention that we have on the grounds today, the president of the Islandio Society, uh, who is Ben Crow. And we also have the vice president, Lina Torres Nunez. You can't get more Islandio than that. And we have many of our board members here. And we also have Tony Fernandez here who is the nephew of Frank Fernandez, who founded this museum complex. I should also mention today that we have uh, many parish officials because this belongs, this facility belongs to St. Bernard Parish government. So we have Councilman Howard Luna, who is a, a Filipino descendant. We have two Canary Island descendants who are seated on our council. We have Wanda Alcon, who is a Mellorine descendant. And then we have Monte Montelongo, who is an Alfonso descendant and related to many of our families. We also have the assessor here, Jalen Bergeron Turner, who is also a cousin of mine. You know, we're all related down here. So we have to watch what we say. If we can have a real problem quickly. But, uh, but anyway, we, it's a great group of people that we have and we welcome the Philippine people here today. Let me also say that it's wonderful and we are so honored to have His Excellency the Consul General Gerald Santos from Houston. Also His Excellency the Economic Affairs Minister of the Philippine Embassy in Washington DC, J.V. Chang Gonzaga. And then of course, we welcome always Robert Romero you know, Frank Fernandez and I started talking about a San Marco in 1979. The only other person I have talked about with this marker almost as long is Robert Romero. So this is really a great testament to his uh, perseverance and his patience. And you know, we've been through many different parish administrations and finally, we've had a very good one now that really supports what we do. Of course, we also have the parish president here, Guy McInnes, from whom you will hear a little bit later. So again, 
we welcome you heartily here. Know that this is your home in St. Bernard Parish, and we look forward to many years of successful collaboration with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Highland. I'd like to introduce now to give us a, a historical background is my colleague, Dr. Randy Gonzalez. Hi, thank you all for coming out today. I'm gonna to tell you a story about St. Malo. And there were many stories told about St. Malo. In 1883, the Times Democrat described St. Malo as a new discovery. St. Malo had been there at least 50 years at the time. 20 years later, newspapers claimed no geographers or historians in the United States even knew Louisiana contains a Filipino community. Filipinos had been living in Louisiana for 100 years or more. There were over 2,000 Filipinos in South Louisiana. The Filipino village at St. Malo was discovered again and again. In the 1980s, with the publication of Filipinos in Louisiana, people were shocked at the depth of Filipino roots in Louisiana. We are here today so St. Malo doesn't have to be discovered again. This marker serves to commemorate these settlers and their descendants. St. Malo, was the first permanent Filipino settlement in the United States. Although we're not sure when, the, when it was established, accounts place Filipino seamen, or Manila men, in Palmetto Frond huts along Bayou St. Malo in the 1830s. By the 1860s, St. Malo was the largest fishing village on Lake Bourne. It was a prosperous community of over 150 Filipino fishermen who lived in large cypress buildings constructed over the wetlands. St. Malo served as a wholesale, a wholesale seafood market and a port for fishing expeditions. Further down the southern shore of Lake Barn and into the Gulf of Mexico, the fishermen went out to get their catch. The residents of St. Malo were pioneers Exploring a region others thought was dangerous and uninhabitable. They made a good living because they were willing to live deep in the marsh where others would not. And this gave them access to a ready supply of fish, oysters, and shrimp. But storms, economic migration, and assimilation led to St. Malo being abandoned in the early 20th century. But St. Malo is significant. It's the first chapter in Filipino American history. Sorry. It's, it's also the first chapter in the story of Filipino migration to Louisiana. It's the first chapter in Louisiana history, but it's a forgotten chapter. It's, it's the part of, of history that we forget about in Louisiana. Filipinos who set the foundation for this larger Filipino communi community developed roots in the community by starting businesses and marrying across cultures. They wrote letters home to encourage family members to sail for Louisiana. They built community organizations to support recent immigrants. The success of St. Malo and later Manila Village served as a beacon for other Filipino communities for other Filipino immigrants to come to Louisiana, including my family. They came for the opportunity to work and to be part of the state's large Filipino community. How many residents of Louisiana don't know about the impact Filipinos have had on the state? How many don't know their descendants of Manila men? Thank you for taking the time to listen to this because we want this story to be shared. We want you to go home and tell the story of St. Malo. So St. Malo never has to be discovered again. It just becomes part of Louisiana history, American history, a Filipino American history, St. Bernard history. It's a part of the history that we know and we learn and our children know and learn. So please 
When you leave today, share the story of St. Malo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Randy. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, the Honorary Consul, Robert Romero, who will give some special recognition to some special people that are here today. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bautista. But uh, let me say a few words first. Great is this day, glorious this day, that together with all of you, we heartfully welcome you to this historic moment in Philippine history. All of us have some moment of remembrance in our history. Today we memorialize the freedom-loving Filipinos who sought refuge in a place, not the land of their birth, but in a place where they value their heritage and practice their faith with universal aspiration for better lives. While our Filipino pioneers are long gone, or we may not even know their names or their stories, much more of what they have been through, we hope that with this marker, their legacy are alive in all of us. So the lessons we can learn from them are hope in the face of untold adversity and opportunity, which is not synonymous to guarantee, but with faith and determination, our opportunities lies ahead. So to all our friends and honored guests who have traveled near and far to be with us on this historic occasion, we welcome and thank you. You are all part of this moment in history, and once again, grateful for being with us. St. Malo, the earliest permanent settlement of Filipinos in the U.S., is just a few miles from where we are, but because of the devastating impact of storms, is now but a memory to some. Yes, my friends, the earliest Filipino settlement is here in Louisiana. Several extensive reports, documentaries and stories, written and oral, were shared over the years attesting such facts. But today we are also fortunate to add human dimensions to such accounts from, such, from some of our pioneer descendants on their moments of reflection with their forebears. While history is the glue that binds us together on this event, where we have come from, or whatever circumstances that brought us to where we are, it is what we have accomplished and shared as a culture that we can also be proud of. For true law, it had remained that way until the U.S. Congress, in a joint resolution, recognized the many contributions of Filipinos, just like many of you here now. These resolutions declare October of each year as Filipino American History Month in the U.S. and Filipinos in St. Malo played historical significance. So a nonprofit organization was created, and on March 5, 2012, registered with the state of Louisiana the Philippine Louisiana Historical Society, whose main objective is to research and commemorate the historical imprints of Filipinos in Louisiana. Through the Philippine Louisiana Historical Society, we have dedicated in June 12, 
June 2012, the Manila Village Historical Markers in the town of Jean Lafitte as Filipinos tribute to Louisiana's bicentennial celebration. We have also sponsored the first migration symposium of Filipinos in the U.S. right here in New Orleans in October of 2016 as part of Filipino American History Month. And now this momentous occasion of St. Malo where the first permanent Filipino settlement in the U.S. and where we can all be proud of. So to my countrymen, Filipino Americans, and those who value their Philippine heritage, just like so many others who came here for better lives, were able to integrate and assimilate into American culture without forgetting our historical heritage. Because in today's history of globalization, with the much needed exchange of cultures, ideas, and technology, Filipino Americans have shared their talents to unprecedented heights. And with this St. Malo marker, may it forever shine the true meaning of hope and opportunity for all. I thank you. All right, Consul Romero will now recognize uh, some of the descendants and dignitaries that are here. Well, uh, this event would not have happened without uh, our descendants. So, well, the family of uh, the Madriaga, where are all the descendants? Are they? have the Madriaga. We ha let me just uh, say some uh, names that are familiar to most of the Slenios here as well. The Madriaga, the uh, Pascual, the De Los Reyes, the Peraltas, Cayetano del Carpio, The Lunas, the Ramos, the Castilians, yeah, yeah. of course, the Dorisio, and uh, soon uh, we will also be hearing from uh, most of them. Just a few comments or reflections. <laughs> Least I will be accused of diplomatic uh, impropriety, let me first recognize all uh, my guests here, uh, starting with, of course, uh, our ambassador before uh, to Vietnam and uh, the diplomatic protocol also in the DFA, now the one in charge for the Houston, G Gerald Santos. <laughs> of course, our uh, ambassador retired, uh, Ruth Lim Hooker. <laughs> and uh, the honor consul of uh, Uruguay, my good friend, uh, Cesar Lorade. Let me now turn to the, ma uh, the Master of Ceremony, 
Dr. Gautista to follow up on the other recognitions. All right, we, we would like to request the following dignitaries to approach the, the marker for its unveiling. All right, uh, Consul General Gilbert Segarra, Ambassador Gerald Santos, um, uh, Parish President Guy McGuinness, Councilman Luna, uh, Mr. Highland, Councilman Alcon and Montelongo, please. All right, Councilman. And also Longo. our representative, Ms. Weathers, uh, Greg Arapalo from the State House. Welcome. One, two, two three. three. Okay. Marker is in As we as we resume the program, uh, I was it was brought to my attention that we are honored today uh, to also have representatives of um, again from descendants from the De los Reyes family. And we also have descendants from the Frank Padilla family. And we thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, we would like to ask uh, the dignitaries to um, give us a few words, and we'll start with our parish president, Mr. Beginner. I don't have the dress like Bill Harland today, or the accent, but I can tell you how proud we are in St. Bernard Parish to be laying down this marker today. You know, when, when Robert and Bill came to the office and we started discussing, you know, um, the history, the culture, and the earliest settlement in the United States of America right here in St. Bernard Parish, it was such an educational moment for me. And I've been talking to friends since then. I don't know, it was a couple of months ago. And, you know, I grew up with um, people who um, are descendants of Philippines. I see today I have a school teacher, Ms. Costello, that's somewhere around here today that, that is a descendant. I have some good friends, the Peraltas. Um, so it's such an uh, educational experience for me. I want to make sure that St. Bernard Parish, our citizens and our school children become educated. So I wanted to tell you how proud we were and Robert, where you at, Robert? In, in our meeting, he put me in charge of the weather. So thank you. <laughs> Next, we'd like to hear from Ambassador Santos. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, well, I didn't expect to be called to speak this morning, but uh, let me just say that as a Filipino, I'm truly proud to be here. Really, really proud that we have finally uh, put a, a historical marker uh, recognizing the first uh, Filipino settlers in this part of the United States. Uh, since uh, Sir McInnes is in charge of the weather, uh, I don't think our first settlers were really prepared for the kind of weather that they... they that, <laughs> neither were we. I mean, we're in, we're in uh, Filipino dress, and this is hardly appropriate for weather like this, but we are here to endure uh, chillier weather than normal and be proud to wear this as Filipinos and as, as uh, descendants of, of the first Filipino settlers here. Um, we have to thank the Philippine uh, Philippines, Louisiana Historical Society for their perseverance in uh, finally making this a reality and the officials of St. Bernard uh, Parish for hosting this marker and of course uh, the state of Louisiana for uh, hosting our first Filipino settlers here. I'm sure uh, we're all proud 
uh, to uh, of them and what they had to go through. And they left their mark in, in this part of the United States that we can all be proud of. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, we'd like to uh, ask um, Councilman Howard Luna to approach the, uh, the podium, say a few words. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by what I see. Uh, it, it's incredible, um, the outpouring of uh, support um, and just having people come together to have so much in common. Uh, I'm privileged and honored to welcome our guests here from the Philippines to the ceremony, um, as well as, uh, as all of you uh, for coming out today. I'd like to recognize the efforts of President McGinnis, uh, our council and others in our community for their efforts to put together this event and to dedicate this marker. I'd be remiss at this point um, to not recognize Bill Hyland um, for what he's done here. He's been instrumental in, in getting this done and, and this is absolutely long overdue for us. Um, my, my paternal grandfather was born in the Philippines. Um, so it's, uh, thank you. And he, like many other Filipinos, made their way to the United States as part of the Merchant Marines. Got here, decided to stay, married an Islenos woman. So I, uh, I guess I'm part of the combination that's perfect in this world. <laughs> Um, so this recognition has, is, is extremely personal to me. And, and like all of us have said and the people that have come before me, uh, this is extremely long overdue. So I'm proud to present, um, and again with the assistance of some of the council members, Montalong, Monty Montalongo and, and Wanda Alcon, the following proclamations. By the virtue vested in us as the governing body of the parish of St. Bernard, we, do, we hereby do proclaim His Excellency, Economic Affairs Minister J.B. Chang Gonzaga, Embassy of the Republic of the Philippines in the United States, as an honored citizen of St. Bernard Parish. I have the proclamation. Ah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I just have a I promise I only have a couple more and then we, we can, President McGinnis assured me we'd have 75 degree weather out here today, so. <laughs> he did well. He did well. Um, the second proclamation, again, I'll read through it, is by the virtue of the authority invested in us as the governing body of St. Bernard Parish, we do hereby proclaim His Excellency Consul General Gerald Santos, Consulate General of the Republic of the Philippines in Houston, Texas, an honored citizen of St. Bernard Parish. And last but not least, by virtue of the authority invested in us as a governing body of St. Bernard Parish, we do hereby proclaim the Honorable Robert G. Romero. Uh, Honorary Consul General of the Republic of the Philippines in Louisiana, as an honored citizen of St. Bernard Parish. Um, so thank you all for coming. This, this is... Um, heartwarming, it's, it's incredible, it's uh, truly a blessing for all of us, so thank you so much. Thank you very much, Councilman. And, and um, now I'd like to ask uh, Consul uh, Gilbert Segarra to come forward and uh, give us a few comments. Thank you very much. Of course, my boss has spoken already, uh, Consul General uh, Gerald Santos. So uh, all I can say now is again, uh, I'm glad and honored to be here uh, to be with you at this auspicious moment. 
and thank you very much for welcoming us and uh, uh, I congratulate everyone for taking roots here in Louisiana and uh, to have this wonderful uh, dynamics between the Filipinos and Americans. So again, congratulations and good morning. Finally, we'd like to ask the Honorary Consul of Uruguay, Consul Orate, Orate to uh, please uh, give us uh, a few comments also on today's <laughs> presentation. <laughs> Good morning. This one? Good morning. I assume this is punishment for getting here late. That's it. Well, I'm very happy to be here not only because of my friend Romero, but I do have a long connection with the Philippines. Since 1964, I have been sailing in the Merchant Marine, and most of my crews have been Filipinos. So I learned how to say maraming salamat, uh, Magandang uh, umaga, magandang gabi, and other things that I will not say. So, congratulations to all the promoters of this wonderful event. Good morning. Muchas gracias. Oh, all right. You're okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Galing, galing man ang uh, We'd like to request, uh, Consul Romero, we'd like to request any of the, uh, the relatives of the, of the descendants, if you'd like to uh, come up and make a comment now on the significance of uh, this morning's uh, historical event. Any of the members of the families of the, of the descendants, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I didn't expect it to be this cold either. Um, I'm a descendant of Felipe Madriaga, who came here from the Ilocos region of the Philippines in 1849. And the first place that he and his wife settled was at St. Malo. They didn't stay there too long, though, because he said it was kind of rough. My great grandmother told me the stories of her grandfather. and. Um, so we have a long history here. Now he told us that, well he told my great grandmother that um, the men at St. Malo told him that the settlement had been there at least 50 years before he got there. So that would put it right at the turn of the century between the um, 18th and 19th centuries. Of course, I don't know if we'll ever get to prove exactly when St. Malo was established, but even if we can't prove it, we know that it's the earliest um, established settlement of Filipinos in Louisiana in the United States and I'm really privileged to be part of um, a very old family that's been here a long time um, I've documented my history my grandfathers came from all the women in our family had to marry Filipino men so that's why we stayed with the Filipino culture um, Felipe was from uh, what is now Ilocos Norte and um, Let's see, I had my great-great-grandfather, um, Baltic Borobard, he was from Cebu. And my great-grandfather, um, Benito, Benito Yabut Martinez, he jumped ship. He was a Yabut, but he turned, he uh, used his mother's maiden name when he jumped ship um, around 1898 and found my great-grandmother and married her. Um, he was from Iloilo, and um, my grandfather, he was from Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, but his father was from Cebu. So um, we stayed with the Filipino culture, and we lived in the Marini in New Orleans, which had a very large Filipino um, community, so that's how I was raised. I was raised in that culture, and that's why I identify so much even though I don't look so much like the Filipinos anymore, I still identify with that culture because that's how I was raised. I'm so excited about this because 
I don't know if y'all remember, I think God was there at a meeting. We had a meeting a long time ago with Mr. Romero and Kenny Zuli and a few other people talking about this plaque. So this has been in the making for a very long time, and I'm so, so happy that it's finally been put here because it's an important part of our history. Filipinos have been here for a long time. We've made contributions to America, and we're not, you know, we're not talked about as part of the fabric of this country nearly enough. So I'm glad that we're getting the recognition, at least in St. Bernard Parish, for being a part of America. So thank all of you for coming here. I'm very excited to be here. And there's also, I don't know if they want to speak, but the Dulles Reyes family is here. Their grandfather, even though St. Malo was destroyed in, um, I think, 1915, Filipinos still fished out of there. Some of them rebuilt camps in that area. Their grandfather lived in a houseboat in the area and fished out of there. So they also have a history with that area, the St. Malo um, community. And they showed up. I'm so happy they did. But thank you all for being here and for letting me say hello to y'all. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, are there any other families of other descendants? Yeah, please, sir. Magandang umaga. Um, my name is Ricardo de los Reyes. I'm descendant of Matias Pascual, who came here to St. Malo. Um, I could tell you more, but I don't want to stretch this all out. So I'll just make it really short and concise. Um, what a lot of people don't really know, especially a lot of the Americans, is that the Filipinos were instrumental in the American military. And my grandfather was also not only in, in the, um, the American military, but also we believe the Philippine um, cavalry, the, the, there was a, an arm of the Philippine Scouts cavalry in the early 1900s. So I guess he saw an opportunity. If you were in the Philippine Scouts cavalry, you can join the American military. Now most Filipinos are, that do know is that if you join the American military, you can actually come to the United States. That was one way. All you could do my father's way is just stow away on the ships. But then you get deported back to where they found him. But during World War II, they didn't deport him back. So, okay, well, since you're here, you'll work. So, either you are um, in the military or you uh, in the Merchant Marines. A lot of the Filipinos that um, lived out here and my grandfather, um, T.S. Pasquale, when he got married, transferred his family to here, to um, St. Malo. Now, the hurricane took it out, but there were still families out here. And he bought a houseboat. And the whole family lived in this houseboat. Now, I can tell you, my mom didn't like it at all. She complained about it. She didn't, know, she didn't understand why we had to leave Texas. But she said, you know, we went, we went where um, her dad went, because he knew there were a lot of Filipinos out here. And to get this connection here, you know, I can tell you a little bit more, he loved to, he loved to sing. He had a guitar, like most Filipinos did. You know you guys like to do karaoke. I don't know why you guys do. But um, he, he loved to sing, he loved to fish, he loved to hunt. So we had the houseboat, and I asked my mom, said, well, how'd you wash your clothes? He says, your grandpa told you, in the water right there, there's the bayou. <laughs> See, you, you, you can wash your clothes, and you can, you can fish. You know, and he, my uncles, you know, i can give you one example of my uncle Romeo, who, who is the second generation. One of his um, nieces, husband, Jerry and Katrina came down here. So they started fishing off of um, 
a house, uh, uh, the house was the fishing camp. And when he went to go fishing, he brought back the fish. And as he started to clean it, you know, in America's, you know, you know, eat the heads. So he getting ready to chop the heads and Uncle Romeo said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't chop off the, don't you chop off the head. That's the best part. <laughs> and my, my cousin like, well, well, I didn't know. Hey, okay. I want to cut mine off. <laughs> so, since this, today is Veterans Day, and a lot of us are veterans, including myself, my grandfather was um, a veteran, my father was a veteran, a lot of my cousins that are possible are veterans. We're represented on all, all the services. So, with this closing, Happy Veterans Day weekend, and thank you. And uh, Randy Gonzalez would like to uh, mention something about his uh, answer. Yeah, so I wanted to say um, my great-grandfather came here um, not with the U.S. Navy on the Great White Fleet. Now, he settled in Louisiana not as early as St. Malo. St. Malo was destroyed by the time he settled. But he came here because there were so many Filipinos here. He was in New Jersey and someone told him, yes, you have to go to Louisiana. There are lots of Filipinos there. So he came because of Manila Village and St. Malo and the huge community that was here. And he settled in the Marini area. Um, there were no jobs like he was, he thought, he was also told there were a lot of jobs but he wasn't a fisherman, so there weren't jobs in the city for him. So he became a probation officer. He was glad when probation was over because he was able to open a bar called the Filipino Colony Bar. And that bar is, it was part of the, the Filipino community, uh, center of the community. And it was one of the places where the first Mardi Gras float and all these things happened. But, so I just wanted to make sure we recognize that a lot of the Filipinos that came after St. Malo also came because there were so many Filipinos in Louisiana. That community builds community. And that was one reason a lot of, a lot of Filipinos moved to Louisiana, because there were other Filipinos here. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Peralta. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Lauren Peralta. Um, I'm a descendant of Juan Bala Peralta. He is uh, my grandfather. So my story is similar to a few of the people that came up uh, before me. Um, my grandfather was a merchant marine. He served in World War II on a submarine. Um, they were torpedoed. He survived the attack. However, complications from the uh, attack ultimately led to his uh, demise. So I didn't know him. My, my father was 13 when he passed away. So I'm very grateful to Bill Hyland, who uh, kind of gave me a lot of the history that I didn't know about, and our family embraced the uh, culture. And we're so grateful today to have this marker um, celebrating the Filipino heritage in St. Bernard. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank Guy for, where's Guy, for the weather. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this is my kind of weather. I, I, I really, really do like it. Um, so we've been here all our lives. My, my family married into the, I'm actually from both sides, the Islano side from my mother's side and the F Filipino from, from uh, the, my father's side. So I'm very proud to be here today. I'm uh, very thankful. Um, I don't know everybody thinks they're the greatest Lolo, but this shirt doesn't lie. <laughs> Thank you. We're very fortunate, I was told we we're very fortunate to have here our host, the owner of the property, Mr. Tony Fernandez. Yeah, I, uh, I want to just briefly, we've been here a while, briefly though, just tell you about the archaeological 
work that had been done on St. Malo Mine. And it was commissioned by the United States Army Corps of Engineers because of rock work that was being placed along the shoreline, stabilization work of Lake Bond. <clears throat> and the company that did the work is well-renowned. That was Dr. Sherwood Gagliano's company. Coastal environments or something like that. Uh, I will make copies of the report available uh, to the officials. And uh, it's uh, quite a detailed report. Uh, they did work like test pits uh, into the mound, uh, found uh, various artifacts. But the artifacts begin, the mound actually uh, the earliest times they find uh, artifacts or even shells was around the year 500. And at that time, it was occupied and built by the Native Americans. Later, much later, uh, it was also occupied by a group of uh, African Americans. And then at some point shortly thereafter, uh, there was a Filipino presence. And I have, uh, I have and own all of those artifacts, and uh, we need to find a way that we can make all of this available uh, to everyone whose ancestors uh, lived at St. Malo, okay? One quick other thing I want to mention, because uh, uh, there was, I had done a little work recently at the uh, St. Bernard Cemetery in some background, particularly uh, in the war, uh, in the influenza epidemic of 1918, we put the memorial plaque up today, and the ending of World War I. Uh, I just want to let you know that there was one of the young men who was prominently mentioned, a Theodore Agraria, who lived, whose family lived in Violet around the turn of the 19th century, 1900, excuse me. Uh, he was killed in action uh, in France during the war. And Ted's story is so beautiful. Ted volunteered three times to join the armed forces and was rejected twice because of some minor small defect. Two, if not three, of his brothers were already serving in the armed forces during World War I. And Ted, tragically, was one of the last Americans killed just right before the armistice. And he is, in fact, buried here in the St. Bernard Cemetery. And it is believed that Ted is of the of Filipino ancestry. So I want to make that available to you all. Thank you. The, the Filipino community um, has been very fortunate from the 1950s, I believe, until 1986 to have had a career office of the Philippine Consulate General here in, the, here in New Orleans, in the New Orleans area. Um, humbly speaking, my mother served as Consul General from 1970 to uh, 1977. One of her colleagues in the Foreign Service is with us, and today is a, is a dream come true to her, for her. So we'd like to ask Mrs. Ruth Limbuko to come uh, to, the, to the podium to uh, offer her a few comments. Hello everyone. Uh, don't think that I use this cane because I'm old. Well, I am old. I'll be 84 tomorrow. Right. <laughs> now, uh, I use this cane because my right eye is almost blind and I have lost uh, my deaf perception. Now, I came here in 1977. And 
I told Judy that I would say only a couple of sentences, but I think I should tell you how I came to Louisiana. It so happened that the Secretary of Foreign Affairs sent me an mission to inspect our consulates and embassies. And when I came to our consulate general in New Orleans, the consul general was Judy's mom. And we had been friends in the Philippines, and so she treated me to a, a crab fist somewhere at the West End. I think it was called uh, Fitzgerald or something. Anyway, uh, I was surprised to see a mountain of crabs on the table covered with uh, newspapers. <laughs> there was no rice, but they had potatoes and crackers. And I was thinking, oh my God, my husband will love this place. You know, my husband loved crabs. So I said, maybe I should be assigned here. So to cut my story short, I was assigned here in 77. And I was here in up to 86 when I was transferred to the Consulate General in Houston. And I came back after I retired. Because they say that when you drink Mississippi water, you always come back. <laughs> so I'm back here. And it's also because my children and grandchildren are here. So naturally, grandma has to come. So thank you very much. This is a great day for all of us, especially for me, because I've always thought that there should be more attention given to Philippine presence in the United States. I find very little mention of it in, in U.S. history. And when I was consul here, I, I went around. I, I had seven states under my jurisdiction. And in all of this, they were all surprised to know that Filipinos were here so, so long ago. I mean, pe people didn't know that pe Filipinos had been here for a long time. So I thought when I was assigned there, I, we should undertake a project to make it known that we've been here for a long time. And I'm so glad, so glad that we now have markers, first in Lafayette and now here. My doctor told me not to go out today because I'm not very well. But I said, no, I'm not going to miss this. <laughs> so here I am, and I enjoyed the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Inibujo. We'd like to ask now um, the officers of the Philippine Louisiana Historical Society to come forward to approach the, uh, the marker. And uh, this is a day that all of us as officers have been waiting for because we're finally going to take our oath taking as members, as officers of the uh, organization. Our purpose of the day. So help you guys. Congratulations. Well, today we inaugurated or we dedicated a marker commemorating Saint Malo. Saint Malo was the first Filipino settlement in the United States of America. We, be, we know that Filipino people have been living on the shores of Lake Bourne since the 18th century. And so they've been very much a part of the fabric and history of St. Bernard Parish. Many of the Canary Island f families who founded St. Bernard ultimately intermarried with the Filipino people so that there are many connections. And so this is a great way for us to recognize these connections and celebrate them. We were delighted today to have the uh, ambassador of the Philippine Republic to Vietnam, who is now serving as the Consul General in Houston, Texas, and a delegation of other uh, elected officials from the Philippine Islands to, today. And most importantly, we had the local descendants and then Filipino citizens from all over the South and the United States coming to help us dedicate the marker. So it's been a great day for St. Bernard. I, I'm absolutely amazed at the amount of people that turned out here. I had no expectations coming in to see, have an idea of how many people were gonna show up. My father grew up in New Orleans and he would always tell me about socials and dances that they would have as Filipinos together, getting together. So 
uh, it, it's really heartwarming and it's, uh, I'm really excited about having this together and hopefully it'll kind of stir up those things again and people start to celebrate what their culture is and, and so I'm really excited about it. We've been trying to trace uh, Filipino migration to almost all parts of the world and it's really significant to know that the first settlement ever in the United States is actually here in, in, in Louisiana. Uh, I, by some historical accounts, it dates back to about 1763, although there is no uh, actual pin, pinpoint, uh, pinpointed date uh, with certain accuracy, but it goes a long way back. And some of our uh, early Filipino settlers were mariners who were on board uh, Spanish galleons who were doing the uh, Trans-Pacific route. And uh, somehow, maybe trying to escape oppressive conditions, and trying to find a better life. They jumped ship, established a settlement here, and it grew and uh, expanded. And they intermarried into, into the local, uh, local culture. And uh, what we have now is a very vibrant Filipino community out here. They would like to be acknowledged as having been here for, for quite a long time. And it somehow uh, raises their profile, actually, and the achievements they've had so far and contributions to not just the state of Louisiana, but to this particular community. I think some of them have achieved a lot in their own quiet way, established roots here, and uh, become very, very active and prominent members of the community. Just, I just want to say I'm, I'm proud to be here and to be part of this ceremony. And finally, this has been uh, long in the works. Um, I know that there are some people who have been working hard to, do, to have this. Uh, commemoration and recognition and finally it's been achieved and that's because of Mr. Robert Romero and his group in the Philippines Louisiana Historical Society and I want to thank them for that.